Remember, if you do have to have a short-term fix for either the key switch or the charger interlock switch, you can always just use a simple automotive fuse connected to yellow wires, and that will allow the voltage to pass on uninterrupted to the relay, power on the relay, which will then enable the control board to work. Today we're going to look at the Tenant T5E, the Nobles SS5, no power up situation. Things that we're going to want to verify, the total voltage of the battery pack, connections between the batteries and from the batteries to the main board, board voltage, proper function of the controls. Our main suspects, verifying that we have greater than 21 volts coming out of the pack. The key switch is operational and connected to the wire harness. The charger interlock is operational and connected to the wire harness. Circuit relay number three is functioning properly. Main board is functioning properly. Things that we'll use in this diagnosis are available in the tenant service manual for the SS5 or the T5E. There's an electrical schematic, very familiar as a ladder diagram designates all the connections on the board, how that flow of voltage goes through the machine to the different devices. We're going to be looking at the charger interlock connection. The onboard charger is mounted at the back of the machine. There's a pair of yellow wires that go to a pair of black wires that come out of the charger and they're tucked right in behind the squeegee lift mechanism. There's some circuit breakers up at the front of the machine. And CR3, circuit relay number three, is the critical relay for the powering on of the machine. The easiest way to verify that power is or is not present, when the key switch at the back of the machine is turned on, the battery gauge should light up. If it does not light up, you can lower the vacuum activator and that will eliminate the gauge being defective as a power issue. Circuit breakers and relays at the front of the machine, charger interlock wires at the back of the machine, key switch at the back of the machine right beneath the operator controls, battery indicator right at the front of the operator display. Also within the service manual, there's a very useful diagram key on power distribution with optional onboard battery charger gives the flow of voltage from the battery pack positive side negative or negative logic side if you notice batteries go directly to the control board through two fuses same with the negative the onboard charger however is part of an activation circuit Positive voltage comes out on pin number five, goes to a stud, goes to the circuit relay number three, goes from the stud over to the key switch. There is no e-stop on this machine. Flows through the charger, back to pin number seven, which then controls pin number 13's negative ground, switches that ground over to a stud, over to the relay. So in that sequence, if the battery charger is plugged in, it will not allow positive voltage to flow back on pin number seven. Which then limits the ground to the relay, which then will not allow the machine to power up. Here's the Nobles SS5, same machine as Tenant T5E. Battery meter gauge is off. Turn our key switch on. Board boots up, lights come on. Machine is operational. If I lift this tank up, I have my charger cable.
if I plug this in to an extension cord, charger engages, circuit board immediately shuts off. So as long as the charger is plugged into the wall, the circuit board is disabled. So let's go ahead through our diagnosis. Go ahead and unplug the charger. So the very first thing we'll want to do is verify the total pack voltage. So we're going to look for where the machine takes off the red and the black wire from the battery pack. We're going to verify the individual battery connections. So we'll just go to each wire, give it a wiggle. The terminal should be secured. You don't want to mash down the connection. It shouldn't be over tightened, but it should be secure and not wiggle free and all as such. So we're going to grab a voltmeter. We're going to look for DC voltage, so that'll be the V indicator. The wavy line is for alternating current, of course, rises and lowers from the poles. Direct current will be a straight line with dots. And there we go. We're on direct current, we're on voltage, not measuring anything currently. We're gonna take our two leads. Polarity is not super, super important. It'll just show up with the minus sign if you get it backwards. If you got black on red, 24.8 volts. Notice the minus sign to the left of the two. I flip that around. Red on red, black on black. 24.8, same reading, but no minus sign. So an easy way to tell if your polarity is reversed is that minus sign. So we could have good voltage. And the control board will boot up and operate even down below 21 volts. But as long as you have anything over 21 volts, you should have some kind of power response at that battery LED indicator showing that you have power and we do we have good connections we have good battery voltage if our battery voltage was extraordinarily low we'd want to make sure that when we're charging we have that lifted up we have that connected if you do not you'll have a BAT as in Tom BAT signal here at the back bat that just indicates that the charger is not connected to the batteries but assuming we have good voltage, we're going to go on with our diagnosis. If you don't have a voltmeter, when you plug the charger in, one of the last screens that it shows is the current voltage of the battery right before it charge, starts its charge cycle. We're going to go over to this machine that we have disassembled already. This is your key switch. It's a very basic cylinder. It has two little brass leads down inside there. When it's turned to the right, it rotates and makes a bridge across these two pins. That's all it does. You can check that with an ohm meter. We'll take our voltmeter here. Now we're going to take it up to the horseshoe looking shape, the omega sign. That'll measure resistance or ohms. OL, open line, means there's no connection. If I put my two pins together, yours may or may not beep, but it's a good quick verification that your meter is working properly. You could remove the two wires. from the key switch. Take the leads of your meter, measure across. When the key is off, there should be no continuity. Open line. When the key is inserted and turned, it should see continuity appear. 
here. And it should go all the way to zero something, usually like a zero seven or zero six. If your ohms stay like this one, up in one, two, three, six, means there's some kind of corrosion or buildup inside that switch. There you go, we're zeroed all the way out or weak connection at your leads. If there's a minor amount of resistance, one, two, three, it's not a total concern, but if you get over that, you really need to open it up, clean it out or replace it. It's only a few dollars. It's a very cheap switch. Uh, if we find anything over uh, zero point something, we'll go ahead and replace the switch. If you want to bypass that, just for verification, You can use a known good automotive style fuse and just use it to carry the continuity right through the wires and the machine will power right up and be in the on position. That is the key switch verification. These are the breakers at the front of the machine. This down here is CR3, the relay that controls the total power on the machine. The vacuum relay right next to it is exactly the same relay. It's a bit of a pain to get down in there, and you do not want to go into that space with the circuit live, so you would have to disconnect at least one of the posts of the battery so there would be no voltage live in this area. You can use a screwdriver to back that off, back that one off, switch them, and that will help you eliminate the relay. If the relay is bad, it's a $15, $20 part. We can drop ship one to you. Having eliminated the key switch, the next place to go is the charger interlock. These two yellow wires that go back in the harness travel with the vacuum activator wires. And this is stored right back in behind this plate for the vacuum. It's all tucked in there. So if you loosen this screw and this screw and pull on these black wires, you'll pull that out. And what you're looking for is for there to be continuity it should pass voltage when the battery charger is not connected. When the battery charger is not plugged into the wall, there's a little switch internal that should be closed, allowing the key switch to close and pass voltage straight through the charger and back to the board. When the charger is plugged into the wall, it should stop the flow of electricity and prevent you from driving the machine away while it's plugged in. Open when plugged in, closed when not. So we're gonna go ahead and take our leads, put them right here with the charger output, which are the black wires. And zeroes out. Unhook, OL. Connected, zeroes out. So this charger switch is properly closing when not plugged into the wall, which will allow the voltage to leave the control board, come out, come through the charger, go up through the key switch, return to the control board, which will then enable the relay to be activated. So just to run back through, if we have a tenant T5 or SS5 with no power, we wanna verify the pack voltage is greater than 21 volts. Verify the connections between the batteries, that there is good continuity all the way through to the machine. 
will eliminate the board and the controls. We're gonna start voltage check on our batteries. We're gonna follow that by checking our key switch. We're gonna follow that by checking our charger interlock. Make sure those wires are connected well and that the charger is passing voltage properly. We're gonna to go to our CR3 relay and we can swap that with the CR1 just for a quick verification. If it's bad, it's very easy to change. If we have all of these functioning properly, we're gonna to go to the main board. I can tell you in 200 plus of these machines, we've never had a board that was totally non-functional. And the ones that we've had that were damaged were related to severe corrosion or somebody connecting the batteries with the opposite polarity. But even that, it has a self-protection. So proper voltage, functioning key switch, functioning charger interlock, functioning relay, functioning main board. Thank you. And if you have any other questions, you can always reach to us at powerclean.net. So our final recap, want to make sure that our switch is connected to the two yellow wires. Want to make sure that the switch is passing continuity so that when the switch is in the on position, there is zero resistance. We want to make sure that these two yellow wires have not come unplugged one of them, that they're making good contact to the two black wires. If they are, we want to take them out and verify that the black wires have good continuity. There should be zero resistance going through there. If there is, we want to come up here to our relays, make sure that we have at least one of the cables from the batteries disconnected so there is no power coming up. We want to take a straight screwdriver, pull that connector off, pull that connector off and swap them. Push it right on the other one. If swapping the connector brings it back, then we'll need to replace the relay and we can get one shipped to you. Also want to verify that none of your fuses are tripped, even though it's very rare.